good morning children welcome to our next class in last class you learned about the different animals which gives us wool and the processing of wool the steps involved in wool processing this all we learned in last class and what are the health hazards associated with wool processing also you learned so in today's class the other animal fiber which is helping us to get the fiber that we are going to learn in today's class the another fiber which we get from the animals is nothing but the silk silk fiber we are getting from silk worms you know silk is an animal fiber which is made up of protein it's also a protein how the wool is just like a protein made by protein in the same way this is also a protein secreted from silk moth silk worms secretes this secretion that's what how they secrete and how they are forming how they are making the silk this all you are going to learn so this rearing of this silk worms to produce silk is called sericulture so many farmers many people nowadays depending on the sericulture it's one of the industry which is giving livelihood to many people so silk is a very comfortable fabric as it absorbs mo moisture and it uh, it is cool to wear in summers and warm in winters so silk is the strongest natural fiber so how much strong means it's uh, it's it, this fiber is so strong than the steel fiber of the same thickness it is soft and lustrous as it shimmers in light so shiny material silk is that's why people like to wear the silk right it needs to be dry cleaned or washed with care the silk clothes must wash carefully okay and as if how the silk is identified first time who identified the silk this all beginning of the lesson i told you a story just once i'll repeat that for you it once uh, a china king emperor of china and queen both were walking in their garden and king showed mulberry trees to queen and said that a strong pest attacked these mulberry trees so because of that pest all these leaves are getting spoiled uh, and he showed the leaves of mulberry tree to princess uh so the queen had seen those leaves and uh, queenly she observed and said that these leaves are eaten by some worms not by the pest they are eaten by the worms she told and she observed the worms and they were making a round cocoon around their body they are making like a house around their body she showed that to queen queen king and then uh, they were having their tea suddenly a cocoon fell into their tea cup and it started uh, separating the spreading the thread on the hot tea and she found that that thread was so shiny and uh, she had started collecting that thread so that is the incident made chinese to find the silk first time and then they started rearing the silk worms so from the china it was spread it to the whole world and now we are developing the sericulture in our india too then what actually the process goes on how this starts we will see now so these are the silk worms first step there are different steps involved in the life cycle of a silk moth so in that the first step is this is the silk moth in before class we already seen how the silk moth is yeah how silk moth moves yeah, this is the silk moth the movement of the silk moth you can see 
so this silk moth in first step the female silk moth lays hundreds of eggs at a time i'll show you the eggs of silk moth hundreds of eggs the silk moth lays at a time so these are the eggs of silk moth you can see the number of eggs laid by the silk moth so this is the first step in the life cycle of a silk moth so from this the second step the larva is developed so these eggs are hatched into larva you know in lower classes you learnt and the life cycle of any insect there are four different steps the first step is eggs then the second step is larva third step is pupa and then adult so this all you learnt before as along with that cycle the silk moth is also following the same steps so first step it's laying hundreds of eggs and from that eggs the larvas are hatched especially the larva of silk moth called as caterpillar so many insects will follow the same life cycle most of the insects life cycle will have all these four stages but larvas have different names for example uh, for example housefly larva is known as maggot and silkworm larva is known as caterpillar in that way the names are different but the stage is larval stage so when eggs are hatched the larvas are developed so this is the second stage and in larval stage larva stage this caterpillars will eat voraciously too much of mulberry leaves they eat and they'll become too fat they feed on mulberry leaves for 3 to 4 weeks they'll be on the leaves only and they'll become they'll grow in their size and become very fat the adult silk worms way way next next stage then this larval after eating Uh, the silk worms are the larvas will develop a cocoon around their body these are the cocoons you can see for spinning of cocoons larva will move its head side to side it will move uh, like making a figure of number 8 how to write the number 8 you all know so in that way the larva will move its head from side to side by giving a figure of number 8 while making a cocoon it releases some liquid from its mouth some silk glands are present in its mouth so from the silk glands the a fiber is released a sort of liquid is released from the silk glands so this liquid type material or protein when it uh, contact with air it solidifies and gets a form of thread like yarn it gets so by using that it make a shell around its body and after making this shell the caterpillar or the silk worm lives inside that cocoon until it develops completely and later it forms it forms like a, a silk moth inside the cocoon only the caterpillar making a shell around its body and the caterpillar or the silk worm lie, lies inside that shell only so this shell along with the silk worm called as cocoon so these cocoons inside the cocoon the caterpillar or the silk worm takes rest until it turns into like silk moth silk moth is developed that means the adult stage whenever it forms a cocoon that is known as pupa stage in pupal stage the around the cocoon around that uh, silk worm body a shell is prepared so this stage is known as pupal stage or pupa stage inside the pupa stage the silk worm is developing into like adult 
when it reaches to the adult stage it develops the wings for flying so pupa stage larval stage onwards it starts taking rest even pupal stage also it stays inside the cocoon and when it reaches to the adult stage that's called as silk moth when the silk moth develop its wings and strong head it breaks down the yawn like a silk thread which is there which formed a cocoon it breaks that and it comes out and tries to flies out like this the silk moth will come out and then next uh, this silk moth the female silk moth again start laying eggs in this way the life cycle continues that's why we will call it as cyclic process so there are different four different steps are there in silk worm life cycle now we will see all the four steps together so here the first stage is female silk worm laid eggs these are the eggs of silk worm and the next stage larva stage the caterpillars the eggs are hatched into like a larva the larva of silk worm called as caterpillar so at the stage of caterpillar at the stage of larva uh, they eat mulberry leaves so raciously more and more they eat they will grow in their size and they also uh, secrete a liquid type protein from its silk glands whenever this liquid protein comes in contact with air it solidifies and forms like a thread so after the larva stage it reaches to the pupa stage pupal stage of silk worm called as cocoon at this stage it makes a shell around its body and takes rest inside the cocoon and start developing into adult when it reach to the adult stage it gets wings and it breaks the silk it breaks the cocoon and comes out and at the stage of silk moth so these are the different steps involved in silk life life cycle of a silk moth okay then the silk is ready silk fiber is ready prepared by the silk worm then how we are collecting this silk from the silk worm we'll see now so to collect this silk worm to rear them artificially this all the secret goes on in nature but man is very intelligent he started collecting the eggs of silk worm so the eggs laid by the female moth this uh, sericulture people who are growing the silk worms they'll collect these eggs and uh, uh, they stored on stripes of a cloth or a paper on a paper or the cloth they'll store these eggs and these eggs are sold to silk worm farmers who are rearing those farmers will buy these eggs and then next stage they'll rear these silk worms during spring when mulberry trees bear full of leaves the eggs hatch and the larva comes out these larva called caterpillars are silk worms just now I, we discussed it are kept in clean bamboo trays they use some bamboo trays along with chopped mulberry leaves in trays they will arrange the mulberry leaves and after 20 to 35 days worms start spinning the cocoons around themselves 20 to 35 days after they start spinning the cocoon around their body so you can see the cocoon in picture spinning of the cocoon takes about one week so larva takes nearly one week time to prepare a cocoon and after making this cocoon see how the actual process starts cocoons are collected and kept under the sun or boiled water farmers will keep all these cocoons in boiled hot water they will dip all these cocoons so this separates the silk fiber and kill the pupas inside 
which is there the pupa which is there inside the cocoon get killed because of the hot water and the silk thread start spreading on water so next process after boiling first step is collecting the eggs second one is rearing silk worms third one is boiling and fourth one is reeling special machines are used to unwind these fibers of silk from cocoons this delicate process is called reeling of skin reeling they will start doing that means from the cocoon they start collecting the thread by using some machineries so that is reeling process and then spinning and weaving just like in woolen process how you had seen same way spinning and weaving can be done spinning the silk fiber is then spun into like silk threads you had seen in the woolen process wool uh, woolen process you have seen spinning process in wool processing same way same way here also spinning can be done some machines are used to make into silk yarn silk fiber twist and retwist and make into like yarn so very lustrous silk yarn is ready with the farmers now and then they'll go for weaving weaving process also and then they'll go for the weaving process here when two different colors of threads when they use that's called as weaving and then dyeing process also can be done it's already silk is very lustrous property shiny property it shows and they apply the different colors to that threads and they'll make the fabric so in this way there are different steps involved in the production of silk so while wearing the silk we should understand the process the hard work behind that and you know occupational hazards yesterday we discussed in the wool process how what sort of problems the people are facing the workers are facing in the wool industry we had seen same way occupational hazards are also there in the silk industry too people involved in sericulture run a risk of getting asthma asthma diseases they'll get these are the occupational hazards of wool and now we'll see the hazards so yeah. these are the problems the farmers who are working in the sericulture department are facing they get asthma problems bronchitis due to continuous inhalation of vapors coming from the boiling of cocoons while boiling continuously they are uh, inhaling the flames inhaling the vapors so due to that there is a chance to get asthma and bronchitis diseases and workers develop skin infections due to handling the dead worms with bare hands and so they'll collect the dead worms they'll throw it away because of that they are getting skin rashes and all and uh, blisters also appears on their hands because they will dip their hands in the hot water boiling water during killing the pupa when pupa is died they'll remove that due to that they'll get the blisters on the hands due to the machines with loud noises they can lead to hearing disorders also will come in farmers and standing for hours may lead to back aches so long hours they'll stand near the machinery is near the boiling near the reeling processes next the dangerous fumes uh, causes for respiratory asthma problems okay so skin infection so these are the different problems they are facing children even though they are supplying the silk for the society they are doing their best for the people so we must not spoil or we must not unnecessarily waste these clothes whenever it's left with you give to the poor people or use it in proper way and understand the hard work of farmers behind the clothes you are wearing so understood children 
once we will recapitulate what you learn in today's class you learned about the fiber silk fiber how we are getting from the silk moth and the different steps in the life cycle of a silk worm you learned and how to collect the silk from silk yarn you learned and finally what problems the sericulture department workers are facing you learned so i hope now you can understand the problems of those people and try to suggest some ways to reduce the occupational hazards in this industry right children now your today's homework is uh, nicely draw the life cycle neat labeled diagram you do and color it beautifully and send the pics to me children at the same time you write the occupational hazards of sericulture department workers and also suggest some new ways to reduce these problems thank you